Hey guys, settle in. This is going to be a long one. Not too long, I hope. Um, but I did want to talk to you about some of the readings assigned early in the course. And so we're looking at chapters 1, 2, and 5. Um, chapter 1, you'll notice, is one of the ones not explicitly covered in any of our discussion forums, whereas we're formally discussing some of the readings from essay or from chapters 2 and 5. Um, chapter 1 of our textbook is the overview of the course, pretty much, and gets into why and how our textbook authors are approaching writing the way that they are. So I just want to go over this briefly. Obviously, you can and should read it for yourself. Um, when I'm in a face-to-face -face class, I always start off with the question, why write essays? And so if we were in a face-to-face -face class, I would ask that and then sit here and be silent while you give me some answers. But think about that yourself. Why do we write essays? Um, a lot of people will say because we have to. Um, to teach research, you know, to teach vocabulary, to teach spelling. All of these are valid reasons and very good ones. Um, our textbook authors, John Mock and John Metz, give the biggest reason for writing essays as invention. Writing as invention. And um, so what do they mean by that? Well, again, in a face-to-face -face class, I'd ask you. Uh, but I'll just talk about it here. What do they mean by writing as invention? Mock and Metz believe in the act of writing as an act of literally inventing your thoughts. So some kind of simple examples. Think about maybe you have to write a grocery list and so as you're writing it you look in your cupboards okay I'm out of bread, I'm out of milk, I'm out of eggs these kinds of things but as you're writing you realize eggs oh I wanted to have brunch this Sunday I don't have any bacon I need bacon Ooh, you know what that reminds me the frying pan handle is loose I gotta grab that screwdriver and so on and so on so this is a silly example but it illustrates this idea of as you write you create more. A lot of people think of essay writing as I'm going to gather the information and write down everything from it. You know, that act of gathering information is the act of creating, but it's the writing itself. As you write, you tend to think of more, question more, realize more. Um, that's why so many people are invested in the idea of journaling. If you've ever done any sort of um, self-reflection or Bible study, you'll know that you're encouraged to journal, to write it down. Because that act of getting the thoughts from here down on paper um, really helps us to sort through and organize ideas. So writing as invention. And obviously you can read about that in more detail in chapter one, but I'll, uh, I'll stop blabbering about it. Okay, moving on to another portion of chapter one. Mock and Metz talk about elements that you might use in an essay. And you will see these same elements in almost every chapter throughout the book. So these are point of contact, analysis, public resonance, thesis, a rhetorical tools, organization, writer's voice, and reflection. So I want to talk about a couple of those. Um, point of contact literally means where you meet the topic. So in this class, we're looking at individual communities, right? So let's say you choose the community of your city and the issue in your city is that there's no municipal pool and the residents want to build one. Looking at you, Stowe. Anyway, um, so your issue is that there's no community facilities for the residents of your city, right? Like a pool. Um, so point of contact where you meet that topic is going to be, okay, am I looking at the reasons there is no community pool? There's your point of contact. We're looking at the reasons for this problem. Um, or am I looking at how does the rest of the city feel about the lack of a pool? That's your point of contact, trying to get that conversation going. Uh, maybe you're getting into the research essay and you want to make the argument that the city and taxpayers should fund the building of a community pool. That's your point of contact. Um, so where do you meet the topic, literally? Analysis, we all analyze things. That's looking at why did something happen? How did something happen? What are the ramifications? What are the causes? What does it mean? Analysis, right? That one's kind of self-explanatory. Um, Thesis, of course, I'm skipping over public resonance. I'm going to come back to that. Thesis is the main point of your essay. It does not necessarily have to appear at the bottom of the first paragraph. Um, some thesis statements are implied, which means your reader should get the main idea of your essay without you ever having to shout it at them in a specific sentence. Um, thesis main point. 
rhetorical tools, organizational strategies, writer's voice, those are all the ways in which you write your essay. How are you organizing the information? Are you using casual or formal language? Are you using a lot of exciting punctuation marks? Or are you using a lot of solemn periods? Um, all of those are rhetorical tools, the way in which you write. I want to go back to this idea of public resonance because in the entire course, this is one of the hardest to grasp. Public resonance is the idea of how your essay topic connects to your readers or why should your topic matter to your audience. Um, sometimes that's pretty self-explanatory. If your essay topic is arguing, for instance, that Stark State should build a parking garage, you have a pretty built-in audience in this class, right? We're all students or faculty of this college. We would all benefit from a parking garage. Nobody likes to park in the snow and the rain. Public resonance is built in. We all care. Um, it's when we get into more personal topics or talking about communities that your readers aren't necessarily a part of that you have to worry about public resonance. How do you make your readers care? If I'm living in Stowe, which I am, and I wish that we had a city pool, which I do, um, you can tell I'm making this video at the end of summer. But if that's going to be my topic, you guys don't all live in Stowe. You live in all the surrounding areas, Stark County, Summit County, Tuscarawas. I can't say that one right. Um, Carrollton, you guys live in a ton of different places around here, right? So how am I going to make you care about whether or not Stowe has a pool? That's public resonance. Can I capture your attention by making this a really humorous essay? Get you involved that way. Can I capture your attention by Extending my argument to surrounding cities, all areas that experience a hot summer should have a pool. Um, should I appeal to your desire to enjoy a relaxing, fun summer splashing at the pool? How do I make you care, right? Do I write a sob story about my poor, bored children who are driving themselves and me crazy? All you parents out there will relate. Um, that is another example of public resonance. That's something we're going to build on throughout the semester. Public resonance in your essays. How do you make your readers care? All right, I'm looking at the timer and this has gone long enough. So in my next video, we'll talk about the readings in chapters two and five specifically. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns and thanks for watching.